against us or again in this world not a world to come we bless you we praise you we hold it give you praise your holy name asking father right now in the name of jesus if you just could remember those that are less fortunate than we are at this moment father god you woke us up and you arrayed us and you will give us a mind to come down and serve you. someone didn't wake up this morning in that way, Father. Someone wanted to be here this morning, though, Father, but couldn't. And then someone could have been here this morning, but didn't have no idea of being here, Father. But we're so glad that you instilled it in us, Father, and we are here to just lift you up. Give you honor, give you glory, give you praise. In the name of Jesus. Now, a special petition we want to ask up be this morning, Father God. Remember our pastor and his family who was away in another land, Father. For they are not too far from you that your arms can't reach you, Father. Reach out and touch him this morning, Master. As you did time before. Let him know that you're still there, Father, no matter where they are. You love them. You will see over them, and you will protect them. Save God, a master, till they come back home. And after, to let's take care of this flock and do as he has been doing. 
We praise you. We give you honor and we give you glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 137 from the choir. Take out your hymn books and join in along with them. Hymn number 137. Yeah, and I'm over here for this. 
same God. a scripture by Miss Cecily Cox. And after that, we'll have our announcement and our welcome by our church clerk. Colossians chapter 1, reading from the 9th verse to the 20th verse. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long sufferings with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created and are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether therefore, whether throne or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the permanent For it pleases the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Here ended the reading of the word. Amen. Bless you to labor your body for your daily bread last weekend you have 
Something extra? Give it to me, man. Amen. Yeah, if you want to see it grow, put it in God's name. Amen. Amen. You put it somewhere else and it, 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 it just like put a seed in the ground. It'll have a die before it comes up. But if you put it in God's hand, it will grow. Amen. God is a good God. We serve a mighty good God. We're going to ask our trustees to get ready as we as God bless us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come at this hour to ask your blessing on what is about to transpire here at this hour. Father God, we know that you have blessed us and allowed us to have uh, something left over from our scarce earnings that we might contribute to the congregation of this church to keep uh, the lights on and whatever we need to do to keep it afloat, Father. So we ask you, Master, to accept this gift that we give unto you. Multiply it, Master and let it be used to the upkeep of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
when I think about the conditions in which we are currently living, uh, there is undoubtedly unrest everywhere. But God still is in control. He is a God who can hear prayers from everywhere at the same time. May we not forget those who are sick and shut in, who have been hospitalized unexpectedly. The ministers everywhere, the deacons, the trustees, and the laities of God's church. But undoubtedly, let us not forget the President of the United States, a man who is on a lot of stress and strain. But it's through distress and strain that God can come through. At this time, we will undoubtedly, uh, as Anita, Renita, who? Renita Kelly, to come and lead us in our moments of meditation.
to the heart, speak to the mind, and it speaks to each and every one of us. Such a glorious master. I don't mind saying hallelujah. The highest praise. In your bulletins this morning, you'll see this little insert. Speaking about this man of God that now, our pastor, told it not Robert to send down and tend and feed his flock while he is away. Amen? Amen. I say to myself, if my pastor thought this much of me, it must be something special. All right, man. I read in my book that if a man wants to have friends, he must first show himself a friend. Amen. Amen. I believe that. Reverend Pratt has passed the test. He has shown himself friendly, and he is here today to feed the flock. I don't, I'm telling you, you can keep these little answers and read them and form your own opinion, but I, I ask him to, if he didn't mind, if I had his wife to come and stand and introduce him. Amen. Amen. I think we can go a little farther if we get his wife <laughs> introduce him. Amen. So we're going to call up Sister Sharon Pratt now to come and give us some insight on her husband. Amen. Amen. Good morning again, family. Good morning. I consider y'all my family because my father did. And, and because my father up here did. I thank you so much. My husband needs no introduction. Once you hear him speak, you will know that he's a child of God. Uh, he went to school at Winston-Salem Bible College. He ministered for, um, he worked there for, he's been in the ministry for 30 years. He was under the pastorate of Dr. Samuels and served as associate minister. He served as a uh, pastor at New Bethel Baptist Church in Moxville for a year and a half and at Second New Bethel Baptist Church for 18 years. It wasn't enough just to have a, a Bethel church. He had to go get a Second New Bethel church. <laughs> he is presently associate minister at Union Baptist Church under the leadership of Dr. Sir Walter Mack. He's the son of Emma Bomber and the late James Pratt. He's devoted to me. Three daughters and two stepson. And one of our sons here today, he came in a little late. I'm so glad to see you, Melvin. Uh, we, have, we have, I think now, nine grandchildren. He was employed at R.J. Reynolds uh, Tobacco Company for 31 years, and now he's retired. And most of all, he is a devoted son of God. Do not sin in judgment. Let the word administer to your heart and to your soul. Thank you for welcoming him, welcome him in.
get about 10 people in the house. Who show sure enough know the Lord. Who leap to their feet and give God a crazy praise right now. for granted because somebody laid down last night and didn't see the sunrise. So if God <coughs> spared your life through your foolishness, that's enough for you to jump and tear this place up right now. Now, if there's anybody in the house that's done something foolish in their life, jump up right now and just say, God, forgive me. Somehow, I just believe that we don't know how close we are to the judgment. We are as close as our next breath. So while we have an opportunity to get it right, we ought to get it right. Isn't that right? We give honor to God, who is our Alpha and Omega. We give honor to your esteemed pastor, Dr. Woods. Such a wonderful spirit, a wonderful person, and a wonderful crier in the wilderness for God. What a wonderful man of God you have here in this church. And we give him honor this day. I too join with the minister in asking God's blessing upon his safe return home. Amen. Amen. Also, while I'm doing this, let me do this because when I go to the Word, I promise you I'll stay right there. I'm thankful for those who have traveled uh, this, this morning to be with me this morning. I'm so honored and I'm always honored to see those of you who come wherever I go, I'm thankful. Now, my wife, she, she, she's such a jewel and she's done a wonderful job. Didn't she do good? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, my mother-in-law and my brother. And, and, and then our dear friends over here, we're so thankful. But just let me mention this to you. I was extremely ecstatic when our son walked in. Let me tell you why. See, we don't often enough tell our kids we appreciate them. And when, when you have a male child that will get in his car, pick up his lady friend, and come to the house of God for you, that's special. Come on, stand up now. Let me, let me, let me see you. Amen. So glad to have him and his lady friend. 
all to come and to share this morning because it's so special. Now my brother's here. He's a well-renowned singer from all over the world and travel all up and down the road. I, I can't have, get up with him, I have to make an appointment <laughs> to meet him, but he's here today. Amen. Amen. Now I hadn't asked him to do anything because normally I try to give him heads up beforehand. But if he would come and just give me just a little taste. Come on now. Amen? Amen. Give me just a little taste of something. Brother Meadows, come on, give him a hand, please. Brother Meadows said today that I won't sing, so he, he, can, he can do that. Thanks be to the Lord and to God. Uh, as my brother did state, I did not come prepared to do anything. I came to hear the word and to listen to him. Sometimes we have to be nourished. And not always we have to set ourselves back and sit down and be fed. But we all sometimes have to go on, even through tragedies in our life. And when times get hard, even our children and our mothers and our fathers and things come in our life. So I like to say to my friend, this morning she came with me. She wanted to hear my brother preach. So sometimes we have to just continuously go on to the family, to those who have lost loved ones. I feel like going on. I feel like going on. Though trials come on every hand, I feel like going on. You know, times get hard sometimes for you. You wake up and you have those aches and those pains. And you reach your hand to the sky and you tell the Lord, I feel like going on. Anybody in here know what that means? I feel like going, going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't stop when it, oh, when it touch, I can't stop, but no trials come, and they will come on every hand. I feel like going on. Where the mothers of the church at? Where the mothers of the church when they stand at night? And they pray for you. Your mama did it. Your daddy did it. And I tell everybody, I feel like pressing on. I used to hear my grandmother at night tell me the same thing. I'm sick right now, but I feel like pressing on. No trials, no trials. They wanna come on every hand. I feel like going on. When you lose that loved one, when you lose somebody in your life, and when things just don't go like you think they ought to go. Even this morning, somebody right now going through something. Somebody right now in here is going through something. God has already touched you right now. He's already provided for you. If you only believe, if you only believe and stand up and just say, Lord, I am yours and I'm willing to go on. And I feel like going on. I feel like pressing on. And God, I got to go on for you. And I have to just say that. And I feel like, come on, join in with me. Go in on. Come on, choir. Come on, choir. I know you got to do it. I feel like going. You got to go on. You got to step fast in God's belief. He said, trust in me. He said, if you only believe in me, abide ye in me and I 
realize you're being you. That's what you gotta do every day. Trust your fellow man. Live like God wants you to be. Be the man you're supposed to be. Like going, going on. of today and on the verge of tomorrow but God we thank you for being who you are we call simply God to say forgive us of our sins see God we've said some things that wouldn't please it we've been places that you even told us not to go but here we are asking your forgiveness now, God, here I stand asking you to speak through this servant. Move me out of self and let your will be done. It has nothing to do with me, God, but all about you. So, God, now speak now to your people. Somebody here needs a word. God, give them that word this morning. It is our prayer, God, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Brother Letters. Such a wonderful song. I'd like to call your attention to a very familiar passage of Scripture, and I promise not to hold you too long. <clears throat> it's a Scripture that we so often heard before, but as I begin to think on today and ask God for his direction. He showed me something that I feel is befitting for the moment and for the hour. From the book of Mark, the fourth chapter of that book, let us begin our reading at the 35th verse, Mark 4:35. When you have arrived there, I ask that you simply say amen and stand to your feet at the reading of his word. Mark, the fourth chapter, the 35th verse. And it reads as follows. And the same day, when the eve was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over to the other side. And when he had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose the great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace. Be still. 
And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Lord God. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I would like to speak with you, just chat with you briefly this morning. I come bringing a message of hope this morning. I just want to admonish you and let you know that you can make it through this storm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Tell somebody and say, you can make it. Oh, come on. Now somebody didn't get that. Tell, tell somebody else that want to hear it today. Say, you can make it. You can make it. Well, let me tell you how I know that you can make it. You woke up this morning. For the mere fact that you woke up and you were able to put one foot before the other. And for the most part, we all dressed ourselves and were able to feed ourselves for the most part. You can make it. God is still an awesome God. And we need to understand that there is nothing too hard for him. Nothing. We make things harder than they have to be. Do you not realize that the mind can play some awful games on us? Well, just let me prove that. I'm going to talk with you for a moment. You must understand that if you say enough to yourself, you are sick. You say, Isn't that right? Tomorrow is Monday morning and a lot of you won't make it to work because you what? Did I have a witness in this place? Anything that we say long enough, repetitively enough, will come to fruition. But by the same token and the power of I am sick affecting you and who you are, that same power you have to say I'm well. Anybody here sick today? Oh, okay. I'm in the right place. Everybody well. Amen, church. All I'm simply saying is that you can have whatever you're bold enough to say. Jesus the Christ died for that. Did he not? You can make it through this story. Well, you need to understand that there are all kinds of stories. You can have storms that, that encompass wind and rain and hail and snow, dust, and all kinds of things you can encompass in a storm. But one of the greatest storms that I've ever encountered have been those storms in my emotions. Did I have somebody here? When you are in a storm in your emotions, child, you are in a terrible storm. It's hard to get out of that kind of storm. Your mind is telling you one thing and your body is confirming something else. Storms of life. But I dropped by to tell you that you can make it through a storm. For the fact that you're in the storm simply means that the next step is coming out. Isn't that so? If you're in it, you can 
come out of it. God has showed us in this word. I was sitting there this weekend thinking about this. I said, Lord, you know, I've spoken on that many times. But he said, you know, let me show you something different. And when I began to meditate on this, he showed me three things. He showed me about identifying the storm. And he showed me about speaking to the storm. And then he also showed me about expecting results from what you spoke. Did I have somebody here? You got to identify the storm. Then you got to speak to the storm. And then you must expect results of what you spoke. Oh, somebody missed that. That's okay. When you go home, it's going to come to you. Amen. The storm, you got to identify the storm. Well, Jesus, after he had finished teaching, the Bible declared that he got into a vessel and said, we go over to the other side. Well, let's examine that. He got into a vessel and he said, we're going over to the other side. And what he did was he went down to the estate room. Come on now. And got him a place and began to rest for the evening. The Bible declared that a storm came up. But it's interesting that he wasn't worried because he was God by himself. Yes. The disciples got upset. If you read the scripture, you'll find that it said that a storm came up and the wind and the waves beat into the ship where they were. But what about the other boats that were with them? If you notice, it never mentioned these vessels. Isn't that so? But then it said, as they were sitting there, and as the weather began to encompass the boat, they went down and woke him up. Isn't that so? Now, when Jesus came on board, something took place. You would have thought that he was scolding them, but he used this as a teaching moment. The first thing he done was spoke to the situation and call upon what he wanted to take place. You will find the scripture said, he said, peace. Which means he spoke to what he wanted to take place. Peace. And the next thing he did was commanded the storm to what? That's the commandment. And the very next thing, he expected a result. And the wind and the waves <coughs> behaved. Isn't that so? Amen, church. And when he showed me that, he said, you know, this is the reason why so many of my people have problems in life. Because even though they're in storms, they don't understand they have the power to speak to their storms. You have the power right now, whatever you're going through. Lord, help me this morning. Whatever you're going through, you have the power to speak to that situation. And tell that situation what you want done to. Isn't that right? On your job, things are not going well. You have the power to speak to that storm on your job and say what you expect it to be and wait for your results. Did I have a witness in here? In your home, storms arise in the home. You have the power to speak to the storms in the house. But the Bible says, not only speak, but you got to expect 
things to change. According to Mark 11, 23 and 24, the Bible says you can have whatsoever you say. Isn't that right? Say for be thou say unto you, whatsoever you say, uh, say to this mountain, be thou removed, and thou shalt be moved to the sea. And it says, and you shall doubt this and not in your heart, but shall believe that those things which thou have said shall come to pass, and you can have whatsoever you say. Now that's the word. You can have it if you're bold enough to say it. I find out this morning that we say everything else we want to say. Did I have a witness in here? But we don't take time to speak to the situations that's causing us the most problems. Did I have a witness? Have a child that's out of line? Speak. You don't need to speak to the child much. Because it ain't really the child. It's the spirit in the child. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. You got to learn first to speak to the spirit. Am I right? We war not against flesh and blood. Isn't that right? But spiritual, spiritual wickedness in high places. We got to learn to speak to these things. Isn't that so? But Jesus, I like what he did. He stood there. And he says to them, why is it that these things have to be so cumbersome? Why then do you have to be so concerned about things that you can fix? If you would, you can speak to these things for yourself. Did I have a witness in here? That same day, he asked a question why are ye so fearful? Yeah. How is it that you have no faith? Am I right about it here? Yeah. Now, we realize that uh, faith is the substance of things that are hoped for. And he is the evidence of things not seen. Oh, Lord. Uh, and... Uh, when it seems like yeah, all hope is gone, I stop by to tell you this morning that you have a God on your side. Oh Lord, and uh, I want to let you know that the God that's on your side will never leave you, only never say you. Oh Lord, and uh, if you feel uh, that you need to get in touch with him, just find you uh, a secret closet. Oh Lord, uh, and now uh, close the door and uh, say, Father, I stretch my hands to you. No other help I know. If thou withdraw from me for nowhere would I go I want to let you know be encouraged this morning you can make it through a storm it might be rough outside the wind might take your attention but keep your eyes on the Lord the Lord will to have a witness in here. The Lord will want to do it. He fights your battles if you learn to be still. Am I right about it here? There is a fountain It's filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. The Lord will Oh, won't he do it? The Lord will. Oh, I wish I had a praying church. The Lord will. He'll fight for you. Am I right about it here? You can make it if you try. Keep one foot 
in front of the other. The devil can't do you no harm. Did I have a witness in here? He died. Did he die? Am I right about it? From the sixth to the ninth hour, he hung on the cross. He died for you and I. But early, early, That he got up, he didn't he do it? He got up, and if tomorrow don't show up, it's all right. Cause I know I got a place on the other side. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? God is good. He's good. Is it good? Say it. He's good God. It's another day's journey. And I'm glad about it. But I wanted you to know that you can make it through the storm. Did I have a witness in there? You can make it. He died so you could make it. When you go out of here this morning, speak to whatever's in your way. And you can have it if you believe it. You can have whatsoever you big and bad enough to say. Did I have a witness in there? Do I have any bad folk? Do I have any big and bad folk? Come on, lift to your feet. Tell somebody I'm big enough. I'm bad enough. I seen you stick your chest out before. Now your shoulders back. Why come you can't stand up against the devil? Stick your shoulders back. Put your chest out. Tell somebody say I'm big enough. Oh y'all don't like that. Say I'm big enough. I'm bad enough. Come on, high five somebody say I'm bad enough. God is such an awesome God. But I just wanted to let you know there is nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for Him. Nothing He can't handle. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You already got the victory. You already won. See, all God really wants you to do is show up. Did I do you when I say All God really wants you to do is show up. And don't be afraid. He said, if you act like you're afraid in front of him, I'll make you look like a fool in front of him. So stop being afraid. You already got the victory. Only thing you got to do is show up. You ain't got to say nothing. Just show up and take your place. God has already done it for you. You know how I know? Because over 2,000 years ago, isn't that right? He died for us. So that you could stand up, square your shoulders and say, what's mine is mine. Is that right? I want to leave you with this. What God has for me it is for me. What God has for me, 
it is for me. something special that you want God to to do for you to take note of to finish to handle if there's anything that you want to come as God do for you we want you to come but before you come I want you to come asking God to forgive you first let me explain that we don't have the right to ask nothing from God unless we first ask God to forgive us. Because we've all said some things or done some things that's not pleasing. We thought some things about folk that God didn't please with. So you don't have a right to ask him for nothing until you get it straight with him. Now before you come, stand where you are and ask God to forgive you and then come to the altar. 
We're waiting. Will you come? Will you come? Come now for prayer. Come now for prayer. He said, come unto me that all is heaven laden and I will give you rest. Come now. Come now. tell you something I want to tell you something all of us need prayer now if we have problems asking forgiveness something is wrong because there's no way we can ask nothing from God unless we ask forgiveness ask him to forgive you that's all he asks and then come then come We may not see tomorrow, but we're thankful for her right now. You can make it through the storm, but you can't do it by yourself. Did I have a witness? Amen. Grab the hand beside you. Let us talk to God. Master, here we are, God. We're standing here in the name of Jesus Christ. We come, God, asking forgiveness of our sins. We come asking you, God, to look upon us. We stand before you now like empty vessels, desiring now to be filled. Touch us, God, in a mighty way. We realize, God, we can do nothing without you. We ask you, God, to em embody us now. We ask, God, that there's anything else that shouldn't be, God, we ask you to remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, touch the hand that I'm holding. Give my brother and my sister everything that they need. Right now in the name of Jesus, let the blood that flow from Emmanuel Bange. Let it run through this church right now. Oh, Holy Spirit, embody us right now. We cry out to you now. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Help us right now, God. We know that you are God that hear and answer prayer. We ask you, God, to touch us and continue to hold us. Families, God, lock families together. Friendships, God, renew friendships. But most of all, God, we want to be part of your kingdom. When you come back, God, we want you to come back for us. That we might be able to hear you say, well done. Good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now, come on in and I'll make you ruler over many things. Now, God... Thank you, God, for helping us to understand that we can make it through a storm. We're going to lean and depend on you. We're going to trust you, God. We're going to leave every matter in your hand. Now, God, if you do these things, we'll be careful, God, in giving your name the praise. We offer this prayer. In the name of all of us, in the sun that rises in our heart, in the name of Jesus the Christ, do we offer this prayer? Amen. Amen, amen God. Amen. And amen. amen. Want you to greet four people before you go back to your seats and say, Yes, you can make it through the storm. Yes, you can make it through the storm. Yes, you can make it. Yes, you can make it. Yes, you can make it. Do the stuff.